Hello, and welcome to Wearable Art 2022 Oceanic Overtures. My name is Margot Youngberg, and I am once again the director for Wearable Art. Joining me tonight for our frequently asked questions video is... Hi, I'm Sarah Wallace. I'm the new artistic producer of Wearable Art. Um, I'm saying hello from Lincoln Ani, and I just want to thank the Taku, Kwan, and Akwan for their stewardship. And I'm Kathleen Harper. I'm the technical producer of Wearable Art and uh, excited to be on this journey again with everybody. As many of you know, Juno has been creating fabulous works of wearable art for the past 22 years. The original Juno organizers began it as a grassroots community-based event. And over the years, wearable art has evolved, but the mission has always remained the same. This year, we are definitely evolving, and we hope you stay tuned as we tell you some of the new and exciting elements of Wearable Art 2022. The first thing I want to start with is the originality clause, which is always the same, which is that we ask that you create at least 85% of your design and that it not include any cultural appropriation, exclusion, stereotyping, or racial insensitivity. We also are going to have some changes this year. So last year, it was all virtual. This year, we're going to have a hybrid model, which means we will have some limited in-person seating and as well as a live stream option at home. For our artists, you can expect to have up to three models perform in your piece. That does include yourself. If your vision includes more than three models, please send me or Sarah or Kathleen an email so that it can be pre-approved prior to registering. We choose to have three models on the runway to give the most social distancing, not only on stage, but also in the dressing rooms, which is why we just need to talk to you first if that's what your vision needs. Time on the runway is similar to previous years. Each piece will perform on our runway for two minutes. That is two minutes from the time your music starts when you appear uh, and two minutes by the time you've ended on the runway in a final pose or boogie off, depending on what you choose. We are also looking at a new runway layout, which Kathleen is gonna tell you a little bit more about. All right, I'm going to bring this up on the screen here, um, maybe. <laughs> there we go. All right, so. As you can see, this is going to be our new runway layout for 2022. Um, we have gotten rid of the zigzag for this year um, so that when the cameras with KTOO are filming um, out and sending out to our live stream audience from their the comfort, the comfort of their homes, <laughs> um, they have better angles to be able to capture people's work on the runway and it doesn't get too awkward for the cameras. So um, this year, as an artist, um, you will come from the back, uh, the down the back hallway. Do, 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 You will enter into the ballroom through the same door usual. And then you will come along, come up this ramp behind a, a curtain. And then the first time the audience will be able to see you will be here. Then you'll have the opportunity to kind of boogie, do some stuff, have some fun on this big stage, and then come down the runway. There'll be another little point where you can kind of do some active kind of fun choreography if you have it, and then come down the runway again. And then you'll have one final time to kind of do some fun boogieing or whatever in this little kind of extended stage area. Then you'll step down, step down, two more little steps and leave. So that is our new runway layout for this year. Similar to last year, because we will have a streaming component to the performance, we are restricted by music licensing rights. This means that we are, do not have access to every top 40 hit that you might be listening to on the radio. Instead, we have access to a professional music library of wonderful music that is composed specifically for video performances. That music library is called the Universal Music Library. And Kathleen's gonna kind of walk you through how you access that library and some of the search tools. 
one thing I will say, if you're feeling overwhelmed or you just need a couple extra eyes and ears to help you find music, all three of us ladies would are very excited to assist. So go ahead, shoot me an email, talk about the feeling. Uh, maybe you want something fast and up-tempo, something moody and dark. You let us know and we are happy to also listen to music for you and kind of collectively come up to something. Just a reminder though, all artists will eventually need to submit up to three songs and I will listen to you to each of them and kind of give you some feedback before ultimately we select a song to move forward with. So if you're wondering what this thing looks like, I'm going to share screen again. Here is the website for the, um, the music library. It used to be called First Com, which I believe is what we have in the artist packet. But if you search for that, it'll still take you to this universal production music. So don't get confused if you look for first com because that's what it says in the packet and you get here, same deal. Um, in here, you can go to the little top things and they've got tools, discover. Um, I'd say start with the discover because then you can get to this little keyword search. You can also search by track or title of composer. Maybe, maybe somebody that you like might actually be in here. Um, if there's lyrics that you're specifically looking for, you can do a lyric search as well. Um, so if I just type in water, um, it's going to bring up a bunch of tracks that have the keyword water associated with them. Um, you'll see all of these different things. Uh, and then there are, um, you can do this little filter to the side to add extra things. Maybe you want it to be really fast tempo. Maybe you want it to be a, a certain mood, a happy positive mood, or a beautiful mood, or a laid back mood. So there's all these different filters that you can add to kind of um, narrow down the choices, or you can just put in a couple of keywords and take a listen. Um, once you are ready to submit some choices to Margot uh, for that approval process, you'll wanna hit this little share button here, and it will come up with a little link and you can copy that link and plop it into an email to be able to um, share so that you and Margot are listening to the exact same thing and we aren't going, which one is it? What artist? <laughs> um, also know that in this little section here, this versions, some of these musical pieces have multiple versions. So if you click on that, it'll show you these different, um, different versions. Although for some reason it's not bringing them up right now. Um, Oh no, there we go. Here we are, versions and edits. <laughs> um, so there's an instrumental full length. There's a 30 second, which we wouldn't want because we're doing two minutes unless you wanted to just repeat that. Um, there's a underscore and um, another underscore. So make sure you pay attention if there's multiple versions, if there's a specific one that you like, be sure to note that for us as well. So, um, and each version has its own little share link as well. So. And I will add one thing just, Looking at the version screen that Kathleen has pulled up, you'll notice that first one is three minutes and 16 seconds. So we have a professional sound engineer, Betsy, who will be doing all of our sound edits. But if you are really drawn to that first version, feel free to include some information about, I, you know, I'm not interested in the first 30 seconds. I love the way it climaxes around two minutes. It's the end of the song that I'm really drawn to. We will work with you on how the pieces are edited, but it's very helpful for, for me to know exactly which parts of the song are appealing to you. Maybe it's just the whole song and that's okay too. But if there's something specific, maybe it's the beats that are happening midway through, um, that's all great information for me to have. Great. And if again, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to us. And we are all total geeks when it comes to saying, oh, your mood is this. Oh, your piece does this. OK, let's find some fun music if you're struggling and just having issues trying to wade through the vast amount of music available on these libraries. It can get a little daunting at times, but it can be really fun, too. So um, I'm going to stop that. Yay. So that brings us to the next thing. As you all know, we are in the midst of a pandemic still, yay. <laughs> um, so to that end, we are trying to be very mindful and have a full kind of COVID mitigation plan in place um, so that we can still do wearable art this year. Um, with that, 
all participants for wearable art, models and artists, anybody who's going to be in the building needs to have a uh, be fully vaccinated and you'll be asked to show your vaccination status in some way shape or form at some point um, before we start rehearsals before we do anything where we're all in the same room together um it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have your physical covid card um with you if you have a picture on your phone or whatever that will also work um some people i know you you may have lost your card if there's some way that you can prove that you have your vaccination we will work with you on that. So um, talk to me more if you want to know about how to get a replacement for that too. I can help with that. Um, the other thing that we're requiring is that all of our artists wear a functional mask as a part of their piece. So as you're designing, make sure that you incorporate that into your design process. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be just like a paper mask or a blah, blah mask. It just needs to be functional. So you can decorate the hell out of it. It just needs to cover the nose, the mouth, and have like and not have a lot of gaps and things like that. It needs to kind of work the way it's supposed to and reduce the spray of droplets on everybody around. Um, the other thing that is just good to know is that because we don't know where we're going to be in February, I mean, things are trending down now. Yay but we don't know if there's gonna be some other variant that hits us all and we go crashing back down into high or we get a little nervous because of who knows. So we do have and reserve the right to go fully virtual this year, just in case. This is part of the reason why the music constraints are so important because if we have to go fully virtual, nobody wants YouTube to suddenly say, nope, <laughs> your stream is cut off. Um, so just know that that is a possibility, but we'll be communicating with people and it is our full intention to have a live audience for this show this year. Um, we also are going to be paying attention to where we are at in the community in terms of COVID. So um, as we get closer to our rehearsals, which are in person, and as we get closer to tech and dress and all of that fun stuff that's gonna be happening here at Centennial, um, we will be tailoring our COVID mitigation to, um, meet what is required within the community and whatever risk level we're at at that time. So just be prepared for Sarah, myself, or Margot to be communicating about what that might mean. Um, but all in all, masks are going to be required by everybody, even if you're fully vaccinated for right now. Um, and I think just they just are. Um, and then uh, again, the vaccination status. That just means that we can have this live in-person event and not worry about creating a super spreader. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> um, I think that's it for COVID mitigation. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, oh. yep, I'm going to talk about some important dates now. Um, so the registration deadline is December 1st, which is coming up. It's less than two weeks away. Um, so you'll have until 1159 on December 1st to complete the application. Um, after that, we will have interviews in mid-December, and then rehearsals will start in January. Um, February 6th is the start of Tech Week, and there's a schedule that Kathleen is pulling up, and you can find this in the artist packet for more details. Um, on February 6th, that's when Tech will start, and then our performances will be on February 12th and 13th. You'll also notice down below that on March 4th, there's going to be a living gallery, which is the first Friday in March, and that's something exciting um, that will be something that happens a few weeks after Rare Art. Um, again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, we're very open and flexible, and we really wanna make this work for everyone who's interested in participating. That, it brings up a great point that I hadn't even thought of, the Living Gallery. Um, mm -hmm. If you didn't see the Living Gallery last year, it was brand new last year, we were, are actually going to continue it this year because it was so popular. So normally in wearable art, you finish the show, you walk out into the lobby at Centennial Hall, and you get to walk past everyone's piece. And although we love that, it got awfully crowded. So instead, over at the Jack Main Hall, we will have our artists and our models for a dress form wearing the piece on the first Friday in March. And we will have um, docents who will be there to speak about the piece, answer questions, but it's an opportunity for the audience to get up closer 
not necessarily too close and see those pieces not in motion so you can really enjoy some of the intricate details that our artists have put all of their time and effort towards. It's also a great time for any of the artists who feel like they want to talk more about some of the construction process or some of the things that they've gone through that maybe aren't as easy to see from the stage. Um, they, you can really dive into it with the folks who come to the Living Gallery if you as an artist would like to be the docent for your piece and talk about that really cool process that you came up with to make this amazing thing that may not necessarily read on stage. Absolutely. Okay. I think that comes to just kind of the last bit of potpourri of frequently asked questions. Something that we get asked year after year is, does my piece have to be made out of all recycled materials? And the answer is no. You can buy all brand new beads, all brand new fabric, all brand new zip ties if you want. It's really up to you. If you have a cool piece that's recycling plastics or recycling um, tarps and camping tents, I remember a piece that was like that a couple years ago, that's awesome. But if you need to purchase brand new items for your piece, that's okay too. Either one is wonderful and we are excited to help support you so that you can perform on stage. But speaking of recycled versus brand new, we recognize that not only does wearable art take a lot of time, but it does cost money for the artist. So I just want to draw everyone's attention to the fact that there is a wearable art scholarship. If you're interested, you can contact uh, Sarah through the wearable art producer email, and she can get you a little bit more information about how to apply for that scholarship. And that can just help um, maybe give you a little lift towards some of the purchasing of supplies or for example, one of our out of town artists has used it to actually help pay for some of the transport of her piece previously. Just something to think of. Um, you're not obligated to apply for that scholarship, but please do if you think that that would help you participate. The last question and my favorite question is glitter. Is it legal? No. You cannot use glitter in your piece. You cannot toss loose glitter as you walk down the runway because it just stays forever and it's a pain to clean up and Centennial Hall does not want you to toss glitter. That also means that you can't just adhere glitter to your piece willy-nilly or put it all over your face and body. If you have to use glitter in your piece, it needs to be under practically six layers of shellac and you need to be confident that anyone who touches it, it's not going to get on them. Think about the fact that in the dressing room, someone else's piece isn't meant to have glitter. And if yours is shedding glitter every time you wiggle, it's now transferred onto their piece. So be thoughtful. If you have any questions about your use of glitter, don't do it, but you can always ask and I'll just tell you not to do it. Also think of the fish, right? It's oceanic overtures. Glitter is very bad for fish and water. It gets stuck in the filters. Just don't do it. Don't do glitter. Don't do glitter, but you can always ask and I'll still tell you don't use glitter. Um, okay, I think that's everything. Sarah? Uh, one last thing is just stay tuned for when tickets are going to go on sale. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And this year we will have two different types of tickets. We will have in-person tickets and we will have online streaming option tickets. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Those will be coming out in any time now. <laughs> Great. Thank you all for uh, stopping by and listening to us all yammer on about wearable art, one of our favorite things. And uh, again, if you have any questions, please make sure to check the artist packet online. Uh, you can find that at the Jack uh, website, um, which I'm sharing right now. So here's the Jack homepage. Boom. Juno Arts and Humanities Council. You just scroll down a little bit. Oh, look, wearable art extravaganza. What's in here? Click that. And you've got your artist packet with the guidelines, some of the things that we've discussed on um, the artist re registration info. What is going to be on that application and what do I have to fill out? If you don't want to get into the form yet, you can check that out there. And then the application form right here. Um, if you have questions, please read this artist packet first and see if it's maybe answered in there. And if it isn't, feel free to reach out to Margot, Sarah, or myself, and we'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions like weird questions that might just not get covered in the artist packet. So with that, thank you all for coming again. And 
woohoo, we're excited to hopefully work with you soon on this great adventure. Thank you. See you soon.